Azalea is a Swiss biopharmaceutical company that was formed in 2000 as a spin-off from Roche when they uh, divested their antibiotic, antifungal research uh, efforts. In 2004, Basilea went public on the Swiss Six Stock Exchange and uh, it added to its anti-infective heritage oncology in about 2010. Uh, it has the therapy areas of oncology and uh, anti-effectives because there's a lot of synergy in terms of R&D and commercial between those different therapy areas. Uh, we have two commercial stage assets in the anti-infective space, Crisemba for invasive mold infections and Zevtira, a broad spectrum antibiotic. And we have three clinical development, clinical pipeline compounds in oncology, ranging between phase one through to uh, a registrational phase two uh, asset. We have 223 million Swiss francs of cash at the end of 2018, so we're in a strong cash position. Our future long-term value will come from both the increase in revenues of our commercial stage assets, Crescemba and Zeftira, in addition to generating positive data from the clinical oncology pipeline. Crescemba is a product, it's the brand name of the uh, active ingredient isoconazole and it's used for invasive mold infections, particularly the two most common mold infections, invasive aspergillosis and mucormycosis. These have a very high unmet medical need and Crescemba is differentiated because of its uh, increased safety profile, better safety profile and its ease of use and its breadth of spectrum. And uh, it's appearing now as the treatment of choice for the treatment of invasive aspergillosis in many of the key clinical guidelines. By the end of 2018, it was available in about 20 uh, countries worldwide, and we are projecting that by the end of 2019, it will be available in about 40 countries. And then uh, by the end of 2021, it should be available in about 60 countries. It's available through our network of commercial stage partners, which are either licensed or distribution partners, and uh, Basilea participates through those partnerships by way of upfront and sales milestones as well as royalties and a, a transfer price. And this means with this particular model we have that we are generating cash from the moment we uh, sign the agreement and the partner launches the compound. The product has exclusivity until 2027 in the US and uh, 2027 in Europe as well. Uh, pending successful completion of the uh, pediatric program. And this uh, compound, Crescemba, is currently driving our revenues. As indicated, it, its early uptake has been very strong and uh, it's got $160 million of in-market sales to the end of 2018, which is uh, indicative of the fact that this product is fulfilling an unmet medical need. Zeftera is the brand name for the active ingredient Ceftabiprol. Ceftabiprol is a broad spectrum antibiotic with activity against gram positive and gram negative uh, pathogens. In particular, has particular activity against MRSA. And when we look at the MRSA antibiotics that are used, the market for MRSA drugs, it's about a $3 billion market. Uh, interestingly though, it's uh, driven by the MRSA rates in the countries. And when you look at those MRSA rates, the US is a key priority market for Zeftera because of the high MRSA rates. Zeftera is marketed currently in uh, major markets of Europe and in certain other markets around the world globally. Given the US is the key market for Zeftera going forwards, uh, we do have a strategy for access in the US market. This has been aligned and agreed with the FDA, where we require two cross-supportive phase three studies. One in uh, acute skin and skin structure infections, and one in Staphylococcus aureus bacteremia. These two studies are both required to file and then get a potential approval for Zevtera in the US. The skin study should report top-line results in the second half of 2019, and then the uh, Staph aureus bacteremia study should report its data in probably the middle of 2021. Both studies are required for the approval. The US studies, the phase three studies that we're currently carrying out in skin and Staph aureus bacteremia are funded uh, to a large degree, effectively by the US government through BARDA. They provide up to $128 million of non-dilutive funding, which is about 70% of the costs of uh, these studies. 
This is one of the incentives that's provided to antibiotic developers uh, available uh, from the US. The second incentive that's also really important for us is this QIDP designation, which gives us 10 years of exclusivity following the approval of the drug. This is independent of the patent situation. So this means that if we were to file in 2021, Sefteria for the US, get an approval in 2022, we would get 10 years of exclusivity from that date. With Zevterra in the US, we are planning on commercializing through a partner and not commercializing ourselves in, in the US market. We have currently three compounds in clinical development in oncology. Behind that, we have a series of preclinical assets, but in terms of in the clinic, we have three oncology clinical assets. These are, have been achieved, this has been achieved by a mix of internal and external development. So most recently, uh, in April 2018, we in-licensed the pan-FGFR inhibitor derazantinib from a company called Arcule. Prior to that, we had in-licensed from a UK consortium, including the Wellcome Trust and the, and the Institute of Cancer Research, a uh, pan-RAF SARC kinase inhibitor. So we tend to look at both internal and external development to uh, develop our pipeline of assets. The pan-FGFR inhibitor derazantinib has interesting activity as well against FGFR, against CSF1R. And this actually gives it the potential to be combined with immune uh, oncology assets like pdl one inhibitors. And this is why we uh, entered into an agreement with uh, Roche earlier this year for the combination of our product derazantinib with their pdl one inhibitor, Tocentric. This study will start in their urothelial cancer in the middle of this year, and we hope to get top-line data from the early cohorts of that study in the second half of 2020. This is in addition to the ongoing intrahepatic cholangiocarcinoma study, which is currently ongoing uh, with derazantinib as a single agent, and that again should report out in the second half of 2020. So we should start to see real clinical data in both these indications of urothelial cancer and the bile duct cancer in the second half of 2020. A compound behind derazantinib in terms of clinical development is BAL101553. This is currently being studied uh, in two areas, glioblastoma and advanced ovarian cancer. In glioblastoma, it's a newly diagnosed as well as refractory relapsed glioblastoma patients. And in ovarian cancer, it's in the advanced ovarian cancer setting. And the results of the most advanced study on this compound, the phase 2A study, are expected in the second half of 2019. We have shown a history of looking at in-licensing as well as developing our own compounds. We will continue to do this in terms of looking for the right assets to develop all the way to commercialization as we've done before. In terms of antibiotics and antifungals, uh, the bar is very high. We are looking for novel agents or from a novel class that really can, have, got, have got the potential to show superiority in a phase three study. In terms of oncology, we're very focused, our history is on targeted small molecule uh, assets. And that's what we'll continue to look at, leveraging our translational oncology expertise. And really with a focus on biomarkers that can either identify patient groups, subgroups, or patients that, are, that can best respond to the agents. So that's really our sweet spot in terms of what we're looking for going forward. Clearly, the continued revenue, significant revenue growth that we've seen over the last 18 months, we expect to continue uh, from both Crescemba and Zevtira. Initially, that's been driven by Crescemba, and it's been driven by existing markets, but also the addition of new markets uh, to really drive that revenue growth. So that's key for us going forward. Secondly, the progression of our pipeline. And in terms of the progression of our pipeline, the key data points coming up are the Ceftabipro Phase 3 skin study will report in the second half of this year. We'll also have, towards the end of this year, 2019, the uh, BAL101553 uh, data readout from the Phase 2A in glioblastoma and advanced ovarian cancer. That should report out towards the end of this year. And then, importantly, our derazantinib 
uh, lead oncology asset, will report out during the second half of 2020 in the two indications of intrahepatic cholangiocarcinoma or bile duct cancer and also uothelial cancer. And uh, this data readouts in combination with the revenue growth should provide the basis for long-term shareholder growth.